Now, Republicans are warning the surge at the border could get worse thanks to the Democrats' $3.5 trillion spending plan. Now, joining us now is former acting ICE director Tom Holman. Tom, now the spending in this plan calls for $107 billion for the Judiciary Committee. Now, with some of that money to be used for this, quote, a lawful permanent status for qualified immigrants, what do you think that message is going to send? It's going to send the message the Democrats want to send. It's another enticement, another giveaway that they know is going to increase the illegal migration on the southern border. It's, it's just it's amazing in the middle of a crisis like that that they're not talking about how do we secure the border? How do we how do we slow the flow? How do we save lives? How do we stop women from being sexually assaulted by the cartels? How do we stop children from dying crossing the river? How do we relieve the border patrol of the unprecedented crisis they're dealing with? How do we stop COVID illegal immigrants from coming across the country? Instead, they come up with a plan to offer another enticement that they know will increase numbers come across the border. That's exactly the plan, right? They, this is by design. This is open borders, and they're feeding into it. Yeah, we're not hearing any of those things that you were talking about. Now, here's a reaction uh, from part when this part of the bill was was released and announced from someone on the ground dealing with the border crisis, Lieutenant Christopher Olivares of the Texas Department of Public Safety. Listen to this. There's ways of you know of um, you know coming to the country and doing it lawfully, and maybe you know have a policy developed for a pathway to citizenship. But I think this way. It's just going to, those numbers are going to increase um, significantly, especially when, when they know, when the illegal immigrants know that when they come to the U.S., um, they'll be a lawful citizen. And you're just going to continue seeing an increase, and it's just going to be very, very overwhelming. Right now, as it is, it's overwhelming. I, I mean, how could it be more overwhelming than it is right now? It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse when they end Title 42 and single, and single adults come across. It's going to get worse as more COVID cases come to this country and get released. And I'll, I'll say this, you know, I've seen other Republican senators and congressmen come on this network and other networks, and they're complaining about the border, and they're calling Biden out about it. But what are they doing about it? It's time to take action. For instance, there was this, not a single senator should have voted for the infrastructure bill this weekend until the, the administration addresses the border issue. It's a humanitarian crisis. It's a national security crisis. It's a public health crisis. That should be front and center. If I was a Republican senator or congressman, I wouldn't go to one meeting. I wouldn't give one minute toward future legislation on anything until this administration addresses our, our, our most important uh, conflict right now on that border. That's putting American lives at risk. Yeah, it's certainly something the administration does not want to talk about. Now, the Border Patrol chief is telling Fox News that numbers for July will show that there is over 210,000 apprehensions at the border, uh, a 20-year high. Now, how many of those hundreds of thousands are spreading COVID? And what about those gotaways? Look, there's been uh, approximately 300,000 gotaways. How many of them are gang members? How many of them are would-be terrorists? How many of them have COVID? We don't know. But even with the ones that are caught, look, CBP, Border Patrol, still does not test for COVID. Only in one sector, Del Rio, that they actually contract some to do it. But the rest of the border, like McAllen, they count on the local communities to test, and they're not testing everybody. We know for a fact that thousands of illegal aliens have been released in the United States with COVID. That's not even arguable, and the department can't argue that either because they know it's a factual statement. The secretary is going down there tomorrow. I don't know why he's going down there because he said numerous times, the border is secure and it's closed. So what's he going down there for? What's he going to look at? So again, it's a hypocrisy of this. Uh, of, of Just this unbelievable. And I want you to look at some of these pictures and the conditions in one of the facilities in the Rio Grande Valley. I mean, women are literally sleeping like sardines in these images uh, that we have. Uh, you know, the image, you know, it, it doesn't really show that everything's under control down there. Uh, I mean, they're there on the screen now. I mean, it just just one on top of another. This is horrible conditions. These are conditions uh, that, that the Trump administration got got blamed. For. But now, look, we're at the Biden administration. They said things would be different, and they don't look very different. Let me tell you something. The humanitarian crisis on the border is worse than it was with President Trump. And where's AOC? You know, where's Kamala Harris? I mean, they ran down to the border in the Trump administration. AOC stood by chain link fence of an empty facility and, and screamed and yelled about the facilities and women drinking out of toilets and everything else. Where are they now? The conditions are much worse now than they were in the Trump administration. But I don't see one of the progressives down there on the border raising hell about that. Again, it's just politics over common sense.
And in the last 30 seconds here, um, you know, drugs are streaming in. Custom agents seized over 2 million to, or 2 tons of meth and fentanyl worth nearly $13 million in California and the largest meth seizure to date along the southwest border. Is this what's happening? Sort of like get the uh, get resources in one area and then the coyotes uh, and the cartels are able in the other area to get through? Absolutely. The cartels control the border. They send a big group of family units or in one area, ties the border patrol up, and that's where they move their drugs and gang members to unprotected parts of the border. Border patrol has already said 40 or 50 percent of their manpower is no longer aligned doing those duties. And this is what they seize. The question is, how much got through that they couldn't seize because only half of them are on the border now because they're busy processing families? If, for instance, there's been over 90,000 fentanyl overdoses during the Biden administration because of, of the open borders. DEA has clearly said 90% of fentanyl is coming across that southern border. And what's the administration doing about it? Nothing. Nothing. They're working that process yeah. and releasing planes as quick as they can. Unbelievable. Tom Homan, thank you as always. Your institutional knowledge about the security at the border is a huge asset here.